Vice President Bruce Gallarducci. Bill Henderson? Here. Joe Colosso? Here. Joe Gucci? Here. Nina Petroselli? Here. Virginia Snyder? Here. Mayor Betty Cookman? Here. Lisa Thomas Turner? Here. Interim Borough, Borough Engineer Kevin Brett? Here. Borough Manager Lori Collins? Assistant to the Borough Manager Short Blower? Here. Police Chief Chad King? Here. Fire Chief Greg Costain? Here. Southbridge EMS Brianne Miller? Here. to start on PennDOT, make sure, hopefully in my lifetime, that they can start the work on going from Upper St. Clair to the part of South Fayette, what used to be Mayview, and end up out on 79 and the new highway. Uh, I urge you, please, try to push that through. Uh, with more and more development out there, more and more flooding out there, People out there that you know, have that Thursday, Friday, they had to go another way to get home from work, which sounds just like when we had the uh, 2004 hurricane here. The other thing that I have run into is the public. And I'm going to suggest this because I'm running into people who are not happy. And they might not ever be happy that they still put it on my shoulders and they will not come down here to put it on theirs. One of their suggestions, which is very good, several of them are quite concerned about the future of McLaughlin Park. And they were hoping that sometime between now and Christmas, a little newsletter would go out just to the residents of Bridgeville about the status of something such as that. So those are my ideas for the summer. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Mary, two things. This is the, if you ever ride out Morganza Road, I don't know how much it's going to help bridge. That new highway is cutting all the way over to the beginning of the road. It's to go to the airport, but it's also supposed to tie into 79. What I heard is not going to be, it's a toll road, but there's not going to be a toll on Morganza Road. So they're going to, this is your word. And I see them working out there like crazy. It's a mess. It's a mess, but that's both of It's a gigantic mess. mess. Not the park. You know, it's not involved in we got all that trees and whatnot, debris. We did get a grant to redo the park. We, the flood uh, program we're working on is going to involve the ball field. All the ball, if everything goes through, the last I heard, probably. With the rack, there's going to be an awful lot of work being done out there. Hopefully, sooner than later. Uh, the park's not open because there's going to be construction vehicles going through there, and they're going to be going through the park. To get to but I think it's good you're telling me and the people that were here that I think that it has to go out when we do a mail in three months or something. Just stick a report in if people do want to know what's going on. I know the person that does the newsletter I'll talk to. <laughs> Maybe someone will help pay for it. All right. Um, uh, Vince Tallery. Hey, Vince. Hey, how's everybody doing? Good, how are you? First of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, I have a problem now. I live at 1419 Barrow Road, intersection of Eden Street. And with all the shrink we've been having, it's coming down the terrace, down the Union, and it's making a left. And it's hitting houses 1411 and 1419. I drive those like this. The gravel's washing away down our whole road. I'm not an engineer, but I would think if a storm sort was put down at the bottom, 
that might have help some of us while I'm on I'm going crazy and I can't park my park my uh, vehicle. Yeah, we go there. We go there? Yeah. Okay, thank you for your time. Thanks. Anybody have more stuff? Uh, Barbara McMaster? Look, um, I was your last one talking about parking on St. Clair Street, um, trying to get the ball rolling, which is one of the very updates if you guys have talked to the parking authority about mentioning that to them or uh, any other updates. So there there was a parking authority meeting. I, I actually wasn't there, but there were a couple of people there, and there was some discussion about having some conversation about where, how to go about finding a lot. So aside from that, I don't know what else I can add to it. They kind of, we did talk to the parking authority, and they are going you know, obviously, there's no parking lot. There's no empty, empty, empty lot for it. Yeah. So the first thing would be, so, all right, where are you going to put it? What are some possible candidates or, you know, an acquisition you can find on property or whatever? Mm -hmm. So they are, and they met a couple weeks ago. Um, and they'll have their next meeting for another week. So I haven't talked to the parking authority in parking authority since the meeting. Okay. So, but they are, it, it is moving on. And I also brought up that there was so we drafted, um, it was ordered to clear, I believe. Um, um, if there was any talk and discussion about possibly getting parking passes or something, like I said, there's already the airport is already drafted, so um, you guys literally wouldn't have to do anything. We just right. We, we actually asked for the parking authority in the conversation mm -hmm. while Mike and I drove up and down the road just to try to get some ideas to throw them in May shortly. And you mentioned the, the, that as well. Mm -hmm. Those are, that seems like one of the easy ways to try to right. get around it. So, unfortunately, it's a process, but yeah, that, those were some of the things that were discussed. Okay, cool. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bob Fryer. Yes, sir. One thing about parking. Uh, I, I know the parking authority for uh, a few years. Plans. I've seen the drawings to make the uh, uh, Kosky Grion property next to the Chris Commonwealth Bank with 52 car parking lot. And uh, I think uh, that a few weeks ago, if my information is correct, the owners of the ARCO real estate building purchased that land from Kosky. And I just wanted to mention if they decide to put a building there, we can kiss your central business district goodbye because they're already fifty spaces short. As I mentioned the last time I was here, uh, some effort should be made by you guys and the parking authority to see if you can acquire that land for you know, other businesses there. Uh, one, one thing I wanted to ask you about, primarily about your solutions to the product problem. Uh, I, I think it was last meeting, maybe the meeting before, I gave you guys a letter from the Department of Environmental Protection stating that they didn't have any permits or any information in their files about the culvert that was built on the commercial street behind the Blue Ice Cream Store. I was wondering, were you guys given copies of that letter? Did you? I ask, uh, ask for it again, because I think that might have put it on the curb best of me, too. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was, uh, it, as you know by now, uh, three different or three different flood cause studies have indicated that culvert behind the ice cream shop is only allowing, I think, 1,400 cubic feet of water a second to go through there, and it should be twice that size, and that's primarily the main uh, obstacle causing the Baltimore Street flooding and also acting like a nozzle at the end of the hose, as I mentioned before, squirting it straight ahead toward Carroll Street, which is the reason Fritz went down there a few times. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm sort of curious, if, if, have you guys looked into getting any cost estimates or anything from your design firm on what it would cost to build a bigger territory to replace that bridge? We haven't talked about it, getting an estimate for the, not for the cult. But yeah, we're, looking other, we're looking at other areas behind it, the wall in that area like um, to, um, to do, do the wall there. We're looking at upstream. Um, you know, the culvert's a big ticket item, and you know, you're talking millions to replace that. Well, it, 
Yeah, as I mentioned, as I mentioned to you a couple of times, I think if you make the replacement of the pulp and the and salvaging, uh, not allowing the pulp street area to turn into a floodplain, I, I think you're talking about something that would create a considerable budget of federal, state, county tax revenues. And I think by expanding the scope of that program and your creative ideas, I think you might be able to get more money than and what else do I want to ask you? Um, I, I, th I, think, uh, I think I mentioned to you the, the occasional or frequent uh, potholes or instability of the asphalt surface of the road from the cement company about 200 feet uh, at each. <coughs> is, uh, uh, there, there was a rumor going around that it was because the power to road was fundamentally defective and could not be repaired. I think I made it clear to you that the core borings from the uh, engineering firm indicated that it doesn't have a major instability problem. And also, I think after that report was issued, I think I showed you guys photographs of the 20 uh, on spots from the roof drains of the four homes right above that area that for, I guess, I don't know whether they make us all do that. For 15 years, that's been pouring the water over the hill, and it hasn't it's been going under the road. And I'm uh, talking about things that we could look at that we wouldn't be that costly. Uh, I think you ought to see if you can get an underground conduit for those 20 or more uh, roof drains that you can get them down to the bottom of the hill and just put the three or four diameter pipe underneath fire and run directly into the creek. I think that might uh, help you not avoid eliminating power to road as part of one of your plans. Right? Thanks, Bob. Uh, Pat Blasey. Hello. Happy summer. It's nice that uh, the fire department is here in, in full strength, which is nice to see. Um, I mean, my purpose for speaking tonight is simply to remember Wendy Abbott. Thank you, Pat. You're welcome. Uh, Fred Valentino. Uh, first of all, I'm going to publicly thank our department for saving um, my flat. Came within two or three inches of uh, another scenario of furnace, washer, and dryer, hot water tank. Da, 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 da. So, thanks for me. Um, so, during this uh, craziness this weekend, I'm watching the creek beyond the, the Jerry River. And I see the creek rising, and I don't know, maybe the engineer does, knows this. Is that an up to sand line in the middle of the creek? Exposed manhole. Do you have been that? Yeah, well, yeah, it's yeah. always. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, one went over right by the bird. Yes. 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 yes, right by the fence that you walk by the creek. Okay. So, I'm watching the creek rise. It goes over the manhole. Um, I'm thinking, God, uh, where is this wall? You know, but it didn't reach to that point in the creek. The creek's the creek. Two hours later, I go over and I see that the uh, water level has gone under the manhole. But the manhole is just spewing gallons and gallons and gallons of sanitary fluid into the creek. Now, who in the world would put a sewer in the middle of the creek and then the creek exceeds the sewer? And, and all of that creek water is going into the sanitary sewer. Down in the receipts, I guess there's so much pressure in the sanitary sewer that all of it comes out of the creek. Is there a way that we could at least contact <coughs> Alcosan and ask them to raise the entry level into some of those manholes so that the creek now doesn't you're get sorry, into it? Now you have a catch point to raise the manhole cover up. Now you make it a recatch like it is. 50 yards off the stream, correct? Yeah, where 
And that's, that's an issue that we have with that one. Like, we want that one to be lower so it doesn't catch the debris. So it's, it's a, I, mean, I know what you're saying, but right? that doesn't make sense because that's where all the all the single lines are. They all run along. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. And, I, and I know that our parents and grandparents did that. And that is part of the consent decree. I know it's palatial, but over the next 20 percent, those are actually going to be regionalized and part of the fix is going to be that they're going to have to become sealed units. Yeah, that's what Okay. And, and uh, Mike, is there a timetable for, for this call? I mean, are, I know they're working on a proposal now. So we, we met um, me and Bruce, Cheryl, Kevin. One of our engineers, we met and we started at uh, the block and run and literally went all the way through the block and run and we ended up down at the, uh, which one called? What's the end of it? Where back channel. Back channel. Back channel. And um, <laughs> we floored all the different things we wanted uh, to look at, and one of the main things was the wall at the end. So we ended up you know, drawing it up and getting the cost estimates to look at some things. So, okay, so, and, and finally, um, when when the, these letters go out to the homeowners uh, or the back road owners, what's the time frame there? So that's why I, why I can't send a letter until the council has the information. So as soon as I get a date, I'll send it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. meeting. Uh, minutes, uh, motion of the borough council regarding the minutes of the June 10th, 2019 minutes, regular minutes, meeting as submitted. Sorry, I'll move. Joe? Second. Bill, all those in favor? Aye. All right. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 2019 Roadway Improvement Program Contract 19-R01, rebid liquid fuels. Uh, bids were advertised and publicly opened on Thursday, June 27th. 2019, 11 a.m. in the Council Chambers for the 2019 Roadway Improvement Program Contract 19-R01. We bids liquid fuel with the following bid results. Uh, bid for paving and construction, 10% bid bond, $120,825. Of Ronde Industries, 10% bid bond, $124,790. Independent Enterprises, 10% bid bond, $139,015. TA Robinson Asphalt Paving Incorporated, 10% bid bond, $144,132.50. A motion to the Borough Council accepting the bid received for the 2019 Roadway Improvement Program contract 19-R01 rebid and liquid fuels to be awarding the bid to the lowest responsible bidder, bid for paving and construction in the amount of $120,000. Eight hundred twenty-five dollars contingent upon review of all required documentation by engineer uh, Brennan Smith, Solry, and Engineer Incorporated. Okay, so, Second. Uh, and Joe Costa, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resolution number 2019-05, uh, motion of the borough council regarding resolution number 2019-05 as per PennDOT requirements, 1.10.14 signed with banners across state highways. A resolution, resolution designating the intention of the approval part of the one banner across state Route 50 to be installed August 27, 2019, and removed September 30, 2019, for the St. George Mediterranean Food Festival to be held September 27, 2018. I said we No. I'll second it. Thank you, Anderson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Carries. Uh, resolution number 2019-06. We can have a second. Um, motion of the Borough Council regarding resolution number 2019-06. As per PennDOT requirements, 1.10.14, signs and banners across state highway and resolution designated the intention of the borough, critical borough, to place one banner across state Route 50 to be installed September 1, 2019, and removed October 14, 2019, for Bridgeville South Fayette Brewery Club Chili Cookoff to be held October 13, 2019. So moved. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2019-07. Motion of the Borough of Council regarding resolution number 2019-07 authorizing the disposal of records in compliance with municipal records manual approved on July 16th. 1993, in accordance with Act 428 of 1968. Uh, records uh, to be destroyed are listed in Appendix A, pages 1 and 2, have been attached to the resolution. I'll move. Gerucci uh, and Virginia, all those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, current estimate number four and final, Baldwin Street backflow for better project. Motion of the Borough Council regarding the renewal of current estimates number four and final Baldwin Street backflow for Enter project to route Osiris Inter Enterprises in the amount of $17,286.87 for work completed. Estimates have been reviewed and approved by engineer sites. Yes, sir. John Nino? Second. And Joe Fosmo, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. How's it worked out? <coughs> I mean, if you didn't have any, as far as flooding in the basement, ones with the backflow of parents, you have any issues? We didn't know I had one problem on Baldwin Street. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get the other one in there soon. Yeah. Uh, engineer, uh, motion to the Borough Council regarding the appointment of Lennon Smith in Solry? Yes. Solry Engineering uh, as principal engineer for the Borough of Borough Bridge for the remainder. 2019 calendar year. So moved. Second. Good. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. I just want to make a note that uh, these guys have been on board uh, in the past few months and have been really nice to work with you guys. So, uh, bill list motion to the Borough Council regarding the July 2019 bill list. I'll move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Payroll, motion to borough council approving the payrolls of July 12, 19, 26, and August 2nd and 9, 2019. So I move. Second. And you know, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Monthly reports. Uh, motion to accept the June 2019 real estate tax collector report. I'll move. Joe Gucci. I'll second. And Virginia, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the April 2019 financial report. I'll move. Joe Gucci. Second. And Virginia Schneider, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And motion to accept the June 2019 police report. So moved. Anderson? And Virginia Schneider. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, committee reports. Uh, Bruce is not here. He has a funeral. Uh, finance. Go. Uh, nothing to really report. Uh, we do have the uh, taxes uh, for the 2019 year coming out in the next month. Be on the lookout for those. Uh, we still have $54,000 that collected, needs collected for 2018. Um, I received a listing and I'm going to have a, uh, a meeting with uh, Anne Marie Parisi just to have a conversation on what we're going to do next in regards to those. Um, that's money that's sitting out there that, that we need and we need to figure out how and what are the next steps with that. So, um, other than that, uh, things are still looking well. We're trimming, uh, sharpening our pencil on all of our different expenses, and, and we just continue to, to move forward. Thank you, Joe. Uh, parks and Rec. Uh, the new restrooms are finally open down the chart tiers. So they look nice. They're very functional. They're handicapped accessible. It's not like they're going to the wall or anything. They're nice. Uh, I was done 
put down the park today, and it was a nice big pond with the old ball golf course. The little kids were in there playing. And Wednesday is the deadline for the newsletter, so that's everything for the newsletter. Please keep it above or down. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, for the works. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I come to court for to be seeing a lot of cases uh, for the last month. Uh, community day uh, preparation and cleanup, grass and tree and weeds and maintenance all over the uh, borough. Uh, sweep the uh, sweep street, later clean up on the street, repair flat holes in the, in weeds, asphalt paving, vehicle equipment repaired, etc. etc. So they, they were very busy uh, uh, last, uh, last month. Uh, and talking about uh, the flood, I spent it all day and the, from, from the beginning of uh, Baldwin all the way. It was, everybody was happy. There was no makeup, just a couple of the health club, which pressed the fire department was there. And I talked to one of the firemen uh, from Bridgeville and they went and take care of that. The only complaint about the street was, you know, we have no water in the base, but we can't use the commode. Well, obviously not because of Elvis Clones. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, they were very happy. Those rails worked fine. I can wait till it comes on the railroad street, yeah. so I put, put mine in as well. <laughs> but the farmer with that did a very good job. Dressed as well, thank you, <laughs> to join the department. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Sure. Uh, public safety, Bill Anderson. Um, just to reiterate, we're going to continue to work on that North End parking and try to find some resolutions to consider as uh, parking passes uh, and see what else we can do. Also, I'd like to welcome our new fire chief who's here today, Ray Costain. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, the rest of it, I'll defer to Chief. <laughs> Madam Mayor, I was honored to speak on June 14th for the Flag Day ceremony at Holy Child Church. June 14th, excuse me, for the uh, at Holy Child for the Flag Day observance. Officer Itzel was my escort that evening. On June 15th, of course, was our vigil on the Avenue Day, and at the invitation of our President Tomer, our State Senator Pam Arlino was present, and we want to thank, for that day, Cheryl Valentino, Jill Hall, Elizabeth Mansfield, Leona Soltisai, Debbie Colosimo, Mary Weiss, Dan Kravanek, John Cans, Mark Lohmott, Joe Colosimo, Joe Minucci, Mike Tolmer, and we certainly want to thank those that went into the dump tank. Hopefully they created some funds for the Bridgeville South Bay Scholarship Fund. Jim Altbader, Mike Tolmer, Nick Chiselski, Mike Meglin, Ray Costain, Peyton Pacristo, Devlin Robinson, and Joe Zabucci. Congratulations to you. It was fun seeing you guys. <laughs> 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 it was fun. Well, just to add to that, Mayor, we raised $407 that were put into that's over 1,200 throws in that day. There were plenty of people that were doing an extra throw, including Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you stopped that. And on June 29th, at the request of uh, Susan Coyle of the Shark Tears Center, we presented Rod Williman, who was retiring from their a proclamation and he sent a note saying thank you for being part of my retirement event the proclamation is truly an honor Bridgeville holds a special place in my soul and I wish you and all of Bridgeville only the best warmly Rod Williman and that day uh, we were pleased to have Councilman Ribucci and Councilman Petroselli there as well and uh, on July 4th so happy to see our fire truck in 
the Cannonsburg Parade. I mean, I acted like a real idiot. I jumped out of my car and had my son run over and grab his hand, Ken's hand, and had a picture taken with him. But he was proud to see the bridge up there. Thank you. Anything else? No. Thank you very much. Uh, please, Chief Chuck Payne. No report, Council President. Thank you. All right. uh, solicitor? Yeah, here are my written report. Just a couple items of, of note. I did uh, distribute a draft of uh, a, a, a no camping in public spaces ordinance of sorts to address a problem we had a couple years ago. Wrote this up for it. We less did reappear. I was asked to, uh, to dust it off and get it ready, and it, it is. Um, I'd ask to recommend a uh, motion to authorize this to happen. So, okay. And then the uh, second one. Also prepared uh, in the process of preparing the, um, the volunteer and fire department uh, uh, response cost recovery ordinance uh, prior to asking for authorization to send that to, uh, to, to legal med. Uh, we're good to go to Chief Ray and the cost uh, fee schedule.
been something that can be utilized in other towns like Burrow. Um, the stuff we had did not have the hard copy. Uh, God doesn't have a lot of the tables on the back. I have requested those. Um, I will send them an email asking if you got a complete copy here. Um, it was a thick binder, but all the back sections were just placeholders. They were tabs. It said, here's an option, here's a cost, but there was no backup information. So we're going to see if we can get our hands on that. Um, because if somebody else has prepared that, it's, it's going to be used to Maple Street, uh, wall project, there's a little kink in the wall. Um, one call has been completed, I believe, as of today. It's on 718. The um, survey crew will be out, and for the next meeting, uh, we'll have the permit package ready to go in uh, for that permit. 60 days after that, uh, authorization to bid and the project will be completed. And so, um, so now the cost has to be in there, so you can see what that is. Um, last item I listed was an R report, and we do have a model. And that's a big thing for the borough. Um, we get you some solutions. But we are reaching out to the previous engineer also um, to try to get the information from the park and the proposed work that we walk through up there. They have resubmitted the permits, from what I can see on that. Um, and they do indicate the model of what they're going to be doing. Um, so we'll request that model electronically so we can stitch that into the model that the Army Corps did because it's not part of what they did. Um, so that as improvements get made, keep adding to that model to show, okay, this much got improved, this much more got improved, and little by little um, we'll show the water level coming down uh, in our uh, different storm events, which will be a big thing. Judge, okay, what's the next best way to spend our money uh, as we go? So, um, it will be a process um, next month or so. I try to get a map that as the projects get identified, we can update every quarter so that you can kind of see figure what the next plan is, low hanging fruit, and then what we add to it. Even if the, the macro terminals that you're talking about, if that's not on the map, let's get them on a map so we know, okay, here's all the houses that we put back for. They were all successful. Here's an area now. <clears throat> because um, the flooding that we just had over the weekend was a little different as far as rain, rain events, areas around uh, the community had significant flooding. We had uh, less than what other areas did, but very close to areas, half a mile. Um, so these rain events are like that, though. They're very, very specific to the whole region. Um, so we want to monitor that and see the different rain events. How does it impact the work? So we'll keep track of that. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Bridgeville Fire Department is proud to announce uh, that we have three new members that have joined our ranks uh, as firefighters, uh, one of which is a firefighter, the other is a firefighter EMT, um, and also a firefighter paramedic. So uh, we look forward to those folks uh, joining. They're already certified and ready to go. Uh, we also had four associate members join um, in the last month. Uh, that being said, we responded to a total of 39 calls in the borough um, in the month of June. One building fire, one vehicle fire, um, a dumpster fire, 18 medical assists uh, with Southbridge, and then numerous other dispatches uh, totaling the 39 calls. We have decided uh, to have an open house. I believe that's going to be September, September 29th. Um, so we're going to get that out in, in the newsletter as well. And uh, for the first time, we are going to do a Citizens Fire Academy in the month of October. It will be the first Tuesday, starting the first Tuesday of October and going all the way up uh, through the fourth Tuesday. So that will also be reported in the newsletter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Southbridge EMS. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I forwarded stats to Manager Collins, since I'll get them out to you individually tomorrow. Uh, so that you have those. Um, for a while we've been talking about the CPR and trying to improve survival, uh, survival rates in the area and uh, we've been doing some pretty good things with that. We've actually got our internal protocols for it. Um, we actually have our Lucas device which is a mechanical CPR device which is, enables uh, almost technically perfect CPR to be provided and then during community day we um, did hands only CPR training for 29 people. So. Yeah, 29 more people in the community that can help you out if they're, if they're really sick. So um, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, Bridgeville Historical Society. Very short, sweet. Um, for the Community Day on the Avenue, we worked on two aspects. Mm -hmm. I have to commend every business company, business store. It was amazing. We ended up with six hundred dollars. We put three hundred, or not dollars, gift certificates. Put three hundred in each basket, raffled them off, and we made uh, around three hundred and fifty dollars on that. I'm sorry, it should have been more. But thanks to all the business people who helped us, the minute we said what we were doing, yes, here's the ten, here's the twenty. It was wonderful. Thank you, everybody in the business world. Thank you. Thank you. Did you hear from the library? No. All right. Uh, Park Mentori, John, do you have anything? Okay. Uh, Planning Commission, uh, Nino or? Slide. Uh, Lori's not here. Does she have anything? Uh, old business. New business. I have a few things. Uh, the uh, Southwest Communities Chamber, uh, their annual uh, car fundraiser. Uh, it, the drawing is this Wednesday, the 10th at 530. Instead of having it at the Chamber parking lot, they're having it up at the Bridge Gastro Pub. Uh, they are going to have some, uh, some different things, very similar to what they did uh, down in the parking lot. But they're going to have the drawing up there. I do have some tickets here. Uh, there's a total of 750 tickets to be sold, so your chances are high. I'll be honest with you, I do not think we're close to 750, so your chances are even higher. Um, and it is for a 2019 Chevy Trax, or $18,000 in cash. So if anybody wants a ticket, uh, I do have a few still uh, left over in my pocket. Um, on the day on the avenue, uh, not enough is uh, said for our two Cheryls on all the work that they did, uh, especially uh, Cheryl Valentino, uh, of all the work and everything for her committee that does. So kudos to her. Um, we are, we've received a lot of donations from companies uh, that, to sponsor the event, and we will be placing those uh, sponsors on our website. And I'm working with the website company today. It'll be a few days, but uh, we'll, we'll get that acknowledgement up uh, for those different businesses and link to their websites and all that fun stuff. Uh, and uh, Mayor stole my thunder on the volunteers for the, uh, the dunk booth, but uh, truly thank you for the community and helping. It was fun, I'll have to admit, uh, egging on people to throw harder to miss and then pull out more money out of their wallet. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but uh, that $400 going to go to a great cause. I, I can't tell you, I've been involved with Rotary for four years, and to read the scholarship applications and their essays, uh, it's amazing that the kids from South Bay and Char Valley that we have that spend the time to write the essays and then to hear all the things that they talk about doing service to others. Um, so we're in good hands with these uh, young students, um, and that money will go towards those scholarships. So we're excited to keep that uh, momentum going, and hopefully we'll even do more uh, as the time goes on. And last but not least on the Rotary, uh, the Chili Cook-Off is October 13th. Uh, we will be looking for uh, a few volunteers to be judges, mostly the fire chiefs. Isn't that who normally does it? Yeah. Uh, we volunteer you for a lot of things, right? Uh, <laughs> and uh, we... Uh, we look forward to coming. It's, it's been a great event the last few years. It's increased, and, and uh, a lot of good things happen uh, at that point. So I already have people calling about uh, new chilies coming in. So we had 27 last year. Uh, I anticipate possibly breaking 30 this year, which would be awesome. So that's all I have on all my things. Anything else in the business? Motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Thank you.